This is the Frat House Sports Show. And now, for this week's completely different and often humorous take on everything sports, here are Frat House Mike, Uncle Mark, and Sidekick. All righty, well, here we go. Uh, coming to you from the Frat House on a very, very special and much anticipated uh, evening here this uh, tonight. Uh, after waiting seven months uh, since February 2nd, uh, the last time we saw any real meaningful uh, NFL football, well, we're here this evening on the very first evening of our newest season. Uh, just one game tonight. Uh, we got the Green Bay Packers are at the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks right now are a five and a half point favor going into the game. All right, gentlemen, I'm not going to hold this against your records. I will not hold it against your records. But real quick, who you got in tonight's game, sidekick? Duh. Okay. I guess I was a duh. <laughs> I'll be whatever you want me to be. And Uncle Mark, you going with the Ravens? <laughs> yeah, didn't I tell you? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Green Bay or Seattle over there? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'll go. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I like uh, Green Bay. Ooh. I'm going with Seattle on this one. Seattle, and I'll take them by the spread. In fact, in one pool, I have them to win it by the spread. Um, rather obviously, um, as a result of the arrival of the NFL season here this evening. As is tradition. We've got a, it is, absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much. You're kind of leading me right into where we're going to be going. We've got, though, a very, very football-centric program for you here this evening. And uh, you're going to hear a lot of football stuff, a lot of football chat. In fact, they even gets, well, I mean, is there any, really any other sport really to talk about? Mm, maybe near the end. Um, but even in our big stories, we're going to have some of our football chat. But before we get to that, uh, yes, we are celebrating the beginning of the football season this evening. But we're also celebrating our third anniversary. Boom confetti. Wow. When you, I got to tell you, I mean. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I need a drink. I'm putting things together last night, and I am sitting back on it, and I'm thinking about this one. It was three years ago tonight that we came to you for the very, very first time uh, with our debut edition of Five Minutes at the Frat House. Um, and as we're going to be doing here this evening, we did that night. We just talked football as we entered the 2011 season. Does anybody remember all the way back to that? My yep. goodness, how much sports we have covered here. It's absolutely yep. mind-boggling when you think about it. I don't remember much that first show because I was <laughs> drinking heavily before it. But, uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> I'm looking for the least possible amount of responsibility. But I've gotten over my fear of being in front of the camera. It was, it was hysterical. So. Yeah, but that went on for quite a few weeks. It, it took a yeah, 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 while oh, to get, get into the... Uh, did, <laughs> yeah. It was, absolutely. I, I, three years, though. This is our 156th show. Uh, you know, you talk about traditions. You talk about the fact that, you know, our anniversary always falls on the very first night of the NFL season. One of the other things, though, that we have kind of made an anniversary, uh, kind of made a, uh, you know, an anniversary of sorts, um, it always kind of happens. On our anniversary programs, we always seem to come up with one big new thing that we're announcing and bringing to all of you out there because, look, you know, yeah, we do this because it's fun. But really, we are mindful of the fact we, we'd like to think we've got an audience. People that actually follow us and care about what we think and do here every week. Because that's why we do it. I mean, we're doing it for that reason. It's, it's well, fun to do. We like to switch it up every, yeah, we like to switch it up yearly. True. Just to, you know, bring, you know, bring yep. in some new, you know, something new. And to expand things. And sure. expand stuff. Considering and we started out at five minutes. <laughs> Which was really more like about fifteen to twenty minutes. Well, and it's going to get we're running it's going to get hour. interesting. It's even going to get more interesting, maybe starting next week. But I want to go back real quick. When you think about it, on our anniversary programs, here's what we've done in 2012, which was our first anniversary. We announced to all of you 
the launching of our website, which was and is frathousesports.net. So we announced that yep. to you in, in our first anniversary. Uh, by the time we got to our second anniversary, which was a year ago this evening in 2013, uh, we announced the rebranding of all of this. And at yep. that point, we went from being five minutes at the Frat House to being the Frat House Sports Show. The Facebook name changed to Frat House Sports. Everything became Frat House Sports. We had a, a complete remodeling of the website, which is what you see today, which is far better than it was the first year. Uh, and so we brought all of that to you. Well, tonight is no different. Uh, we're coming to you with possibly what I think is maybe the biggest anniversary announcement ever from right here at the Frat House. Drum roll, please. Do, yeah, do we have one? That's a violation. We can't call our. We were told last week we can't call our. Oh, there it is. There we go. And the drum roll. All right. Wait for it. I was waiting for the. Psh. Uncle uh, Mark will now do the show nude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Uncle Mark's not laughing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uncle Mark, right away. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I so let it be written. <laughs> so let it be done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But no, that's no, that's well listen. If if he does it next week, nobody's gonna know. No. Because yeah. guess what? Here's what's gonna happen. Beginning next Thursday, we will be launching our Frat House Sports Internet Radio Network. Uh, yeah, beginning with next Thursday's Frat House Sports Show, you will now be able to hear this program, this very program, live as it's happening over on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, and the best part is that, here's the best part of it, this I think it really makes the whole thing just dynamic. You, the audience, will have the opportunity, if you wish, to participate and be part of the chats and the programs and the program as it's going on live through a call-in number, all right? And you got the call-in number right there. 347-826-9964 will be our number for our Frat House Sports uh, radio network. Quiet, uh, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. So, to listen and to participate, the first thing you're going to want to do is get over to blogtalkradio.com, all right, over on the internet. You're going to search Frat House Sports, uh, and you're going to look for our first uh, Frat House Sports show, which will be number 157. Uh, and that'll be coming to you at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And then, as I pointed out, you'll be able to call in and participate in the program. Uh, and you can have your vo voice heard along with ours over at 347-826-9964. Now, we're not done. Because while we're doing all of that, part of the radio network will be the launching of multiple sports programs a week. Now, Thursday will be our regular Frat House Sports program, but then on Saturdays, I'll be bringing you a solo hosted Frat House Saturday uh, sports program. Yep. Sunday morning, Uncle Mark will be bringing you a NASCAR and auto racing program that is until the conclusion of the NASCAR season following the chase. Uh, and then finally, Tuesday evenings, I'll be co-hosting uh, an NFL and uh, football specific program all on our network. So there's four programs that we're going to be starting with. We've been talking about possibly adding uh, a, a program by October that we may roll out that would have something that would be specifically geared towards the NHL. Uh, next spring, we're talking about an MLB specific uh, program, uh, perhaps maybe starting in March. There's even been talk potentially, maybe, of a professional wrestling type of program coming. Yeah, that's this is the kind of capability. Are we gonna, are we gonna have a Tour de France uh, show? I don't know. Do you want to do one of those? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a one off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how long is that gonna last? Yeah. Um, now, or your favorite FIFA? Next FIFA. It's leaving. Uh, yeah, that'll be next year, won't it? Right? We already talked about that. That's right. <laughs> uh, now, uh, it, that's not to mean that our YouTube channel, many of you I know are subscribers and go there and look for us on YouTube. That's not to mean that our YouTube channel is going where anytime soon. It's not disappearing. Uh, we're not getting rid of it. In fact, here's what I plan on doing. We're going to have each one of our weekly audio 
radio programs will be posted up on our YouTube channel. And we've not abandoned doing videos. We plan on doing one video per month. One actual, just like we're doing right now. Yep. We, you will get one of these per month and then the others will be live over on Blog Talk Radio. So the very next one that we've got scheduled as far as a video production would be October 2nd. All right. Now, I know that this all sounds rather, I've thrown an awful lot. So here's my suggestion. To start, just remember that we're going to be over Thursday, next week. You can catch us live over on Blog Talk Radio, blogtalkradio.com. All right, you're going to search out Frat House Sports, or better yet, go to our Facebook page. We will have links up for it on how you can get to the live streaming broadcast of that program. All right, that'll be coming at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and you're going to be able to participate through our call in number. Um, and I would recommend that for all of the subsequent programs that we're talking about, because we're planning on rolling out then the NASCAR program. Uh, the following Sunday after this Thursday. I'll be back on the air on Saturday following this program. And then Tuesday we'll be coming back at you with the NFL Pro. Just follow the Facebook page. The Facebook page is going to be more important probably than ever now, at least as we start to roll these new things out. Yep. Exciting stuff, guys. Yep. I'm, 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 I'm really excited about it. I know Uncle Mark, I know you are. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait. I mean, you know, what we're going to be able to do is explode all the uh, different fun topics and nuance of the sports as we go. And do the show on our boxers. Now it's got a home. And do the show on our boxers. Absolutely right. I'm going to do them with no pants on. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful thing. The, uh, okay, you're killing me. This has it. been something, though, that we have talked about oh, sure. really for over a year. Um, and it just got to this point now where... You know, we've we've had to make we've had to make the move to Strat House too, and there were other things that kind of got in the way. Yeah. But we have been talking about this really since the summer of 2013. Yeah. Uh, but we, it's and all we've now experimented and dabbled in it yep. a little bit early on, and you know, and it seemed to go really well. So. And one of the things that we know from our good buddy uh, Chris Heidel down at Herb FM uh, Sports Radio, y you hear us talk about him all the time. I'll be talking about him before this show's over. HerbFM uh, dot com. They rebroadcast our program. He tells us our programs do very, very well on his uh, on his airwaves and with his listenership down there. Um, and so. listen, don't forget what we're going to get now is the ability to interact with real time calls. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're talking about something that's pertinent in the sports world, and you can call in. Call in. Tell us what you think. You that's, agree? That's you what really agree? makes the whole thing dynamic, Absolutely. and that's what really what we're looking for. That's what's been missing from what we do here on a weekly basis. Yep. We have all of us, and we love each other, but we'd love it. Love if you, were, man. Yeah, we'd love it more if we could include a lot of you guys as well. Sure. Because we hear from you on Facebook. We want now. Now we can hear from you live. All right. All right. Let's go get over to our other big story, and not surprisingly. Uh, well, it's NFL related. Um, Roger Goodell was a very, very busy guy this week, right before the season opener, uh, doing his best impression, or at least what I thought was his best impression, of Michael Corleone declaring, today I settled all family business. Uh, the first was the surprise announcement from Goodell's desk himself, essentially admitting that he had made a mistake by suspending Ray Rice for a mere two games, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, that would have been essentially it. In fact, he actually said it right in his memo. You know, I'm not going to get into all that. Well, he did, though, um, and issuing a league-wide ultimatum uh, that any issue of domestic violence or abuse would result in a six-game suspension on the first offense and a complete NFL ban for up to one year on a second offense. Lengthy memo, as I pointed out, was issued to the entire NFL on Friday, and it didn't take long uh, for the league to have its first case study. By Monday, it was reported that 49ers defensive tackle Ray McDonald had been arrested on a felony uh, domestic violence charges over the weekend. Uh, so I guess what we do now is we wait and see how the new regs will be applied. Now, meanwhile, over in the drunk tank, uh, we had been waiting and waiting and waiting to hear how the commissioner was going to uh, 
respond to the DUI conduct of Indianapolis Colts uh, owner Jim Ursay. He's pickled. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously. Uh, <coughs> Nobody's perfect. Goodell was kind of waiting as well. He was waiting for the courts to finish up their process mm -hmm. because within hours of Ursay pleading guilty to a DUI charge, Goodell dropped the hammer, suspending Ursay for six games and fined him a half a million dollars. Which He's is the pickled. max fine that it he is. could receive. Yep. And also, in that suspension, he's not allowed to do anything on social media, not take any interviews, and he will miss the fall owners meeting October 7th and 8th in New York because he can conduct no business there you go. associated with the NFL. He can't even go to the game. Well, and that's absolutely right. But he let's can't not go to the practice facility. He can't do anything. Let's not forget something. As the owner, this guy Yes, he's going to pay. Well, out. he should be. He should be held to a higher standard. He's an owner. He's going to. He's going to pay out a half a million dollars. Yeah. That's fine. Well, the bottom line is his team is making a hell of a lot more money, even in his absence in those six weeks. So it's it's it's. Oh, okay. Basically, Jim, sit home and watch the team on TV. Yeah. Uh, but by the way, really, I mean. It's well, not necessarily it pinching the, him in the in the pocket. No, but it is the max fine that he could I be. I agree. Avoided, I hear you. So, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, now, by Tuesday, we got word that Denver Broncos uh, wide receiver Wes Welker would miss the first four games of the season uh, for failing a PED test. The team stated that Welker had tested positive for a banned amphetamine. Uh, since then, though, there have been kind of conflicting reports as to what exactly the drug might have been. Nonetheless, uh, seen here dancing with Molly. <laughs> yeah, uh, not well, uh, Molly with the amphetamines. That's how the amphetamines would have got it. Yeah, I mean, apparently, though, this was uh, it, 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 like it's I took the wrong week with amphetamines. That the Kentucky Derby, which is where he was handing out hundred dollar bills. Uh, thanks to a $15,000 over uh, uh, win that he got. Uh, apparently, though, he was uh, pretty hyped up uh, uh, at that particular event. That's been the word, anyhow. Well, uh, all right, regardless of what the conflicting reports might be, apparently the team line is, yeah, it's a PED amphetamine. Well, I guess we're left to believe whatever we want to. Bottom line is this. Within the past six to seven days, another one bit the dust. How about one more? Many of you, uh, well, well there are actually well, more. Well, There's actually about more. Broncos. Don't forget the kicker's out for PE. Oh, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that one. Matt Prater. That's right. I forgot about that one. Uh, but, of course, that one had actually happened again like right. the week before because yeah. that affected our draft. And, but, no, but yeah. it, you know, it's just you it's a boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, but now many of you uh, though might remember Dallas Cowboys defensive lineman uh, Josh Brent. Uh, well, he was, uh, you might remember that he was under the influence and at the wheel of a car that ultimately wrecked and uh, killing, uh, killing his friend and teammate uh, Jerry Brown on December 7, 2012. Brent was uh, later convicted of intoxication manslaughter and sentenced to six months in jail. Um, we thought he had ultimately retired from football. Well, he's apparently coming back for, uh, to the Dallas Cowboys. But the NFL this week stepped in and said, whoa, 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 slow your roll there, big boy. Uh, yes, Josh Brent, uh, well, he can return after he serves a 10-game suspension. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're mentioning it, you're bring, uh, and you're saying, you know, don't forget this one, don't forget that one. And, I, and I'm reminded pre-show, well, okay, wait, wait, hey, Alden Smith, we didn't bring up Alden Smith. The penalties, fines, and suspensions just this week have had everybody's head spinning yeah. to the extent you almost felt like you needed a scorecard yep. to keep track of everything. It has been absolutely insane. So, well, I want to go back to go this whole comments, you know, yeah, Brent, Brent thing. Because, you know, his agent had a comment after the suspension was laid down in response to basically uh, at the beginning of the 2013 training camp, our friend here, this fine upstanding tool bag of a citizen, um, voluntarily retired from the NFL. Tucked his leg be tails between his legs and went on his merry way. 
instead of facing yeah. any kind of punishment that the NFL would give him. Right. So, his agent today, being the tool bag that he is, quote, he could have forced the NFL to go through a tremendous amount of scrutiny for allowing him to play pending trial or for attempting to suspend him before he had been proven guilty. And that was Brent's agent, uh, Peter Schaffer, mm -hmm. disagreeing with the fact that he should be suspended and that he should be applauded for helping the mm -hmm. NFL out of their situation. Look here, you flipping freaking tool bag. You killed your best friend while you were oh no drunk. Sorry. And now you're like, oh, I did you a favor by tucking my tail between my legs and voluntarily retiring. You should stay retired and shouldn't even be allowed back in the league, you freaking tool bag. You really Sorry. piss me off. You know, like we're doing I don't uh, like confrontations. You did everybody a favor. Yeah, you did your best friend a favor by killing him. Good job. You know, what a great way to kick off the third year. <laughs> are we excited for football the or what? Year, the fourth year, the fourth year of Fred Sports. I thought so. uh, just outstanding, um, outstanding stuff. Um, oh, so, but we yeah. also have additional breaking news today. Okay. Free agent. This is going to pale by comparison, I think. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Free agent Andre Brown running back who was previously with the Houston Texans, you remember him from the Giants, was uh, given an eight-game suspension mm -hmm. for whatever team picks him up. That was reported on Pro Football Talk, and it is undisclosed why he was suspended. But he does have a previous PED suspension of four games. Oh yeah, it's... Um, so, Goodell apparently is trying to get the Guys in order. Yeah, I mean, you got to wonder whether I mean there really is. Are, are, are there really? Are there really all these many problems, or is this just the NFL being hypersensitive at this moment, recognizing that they've been under the gun for perhaps maybe some bad decisions, bad choices that they've made recently? I I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, some of these, as we've talked about, were overdue. The Ursay situation was an overdue right. situation. But to have this many, it could be coincidental that yeah, I mean it could be, but you know, that. it's all all at the very very beginning of the season. Uh, Uncle Mark, any any thoughts, any anything you want to throw in here on? Uh, I mean, I certainly don't expect you to be able to compete against what we just heard from Sidekick there, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, you know, right now, I think the NFL is confronting the fact that they have a sport which has probably unheralded fan participation in a way no other professional sport has when you consider things like, you know, fantasy, pick 'em games, uh, office pools, party pools, uh, Super Bowl pools. This uh, league is so popular because the fans not only watch the game, but they actually feel as though they participate yeah. because of all these additional avenues availed to that sport, which no other sport has. And yeah, I believe right now, Roger Goodell, he's looking at London. He's not going to give up the idea. He's looking at Ireland. He's not giving up that idea. And right now, they have super scrutiny in their own view of of, of empirical uh, power uh, they're going to run this globally and that's what Goodell wants he's not going to be there to see it all but this is what his mission is and all these discipline things are just <laughs> they're just fodder in his way yeah. that's that's my take well it's an interesting one I mean essentially it sounds like what you're what you're presenting is the possibility that it's a lot of, well, I don't want to say blue smoke and mirrors, but just a lot of PC correctness uh, to to kind of bridge to whatever the next generation is going to be. But yeah, that might be right. That might be right. You throw enough at the wall, something's going to stick. Uh, they realize they have internal combustion, and they don't necessarily need that from owners. <laughs> you know, uh, and beating up girls, they don't need that. Yeah, it could be an hard to sell. Too, from the Ray Rice 
Well, and that's right. kind of where I was going with it. Is is yeah. it is it all just? Well, that was an infection they never dealt with. Yeah, that was an infection they never dealt with, and now you know it's it's breeding more problems. So we've got all these penalties going on off the field. We got a game starting tonight, and we can only pray to God that we don't see the kind of on-field penalties that we had to deal with all through the preseason. Hopefully, the guys can keep the yellow uh, hankies tucked away nicely. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see that going. Just to keep we'll the updated, Smith was nine games for actions repeatedly resembling the hind end of a horse. He just can't seem to behave in oh, public. Gotcha. Between drinking, driving, making threats at airports, etc. Right, et right. Personal conduct, I guess, would be the Issues. Ah, another flipping tool bag, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 I think I'm going to keep you away from. We're going to keep sidekick away from flipping tool bags tonight. I think for the, the rest of the evening. Incident. I think that might be a good idea. I um, got a big uh, 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 All right. Now I threatened that this was going to be a football-centric program. Uh, and, Surprise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen. What the hell? We're, 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 let's get into our first full week number one NFL report. And that's brought to you by our friends over at CLW83.com, yep. uh, where I had the wonderful opportunity to be a guest on Jim Williams' uh, Touch Mall program just the other night for the second time uh, this season, talking baseball. A lot of fun uh, that particular evening. Uh, great program coming up. I'm sure it'll be released probably within the next day or so. And you'll be able to find the link for that one over on our, again, our Facebook page. That's where you want to be checking things out to find out all the different stuff that's going to be coming down the line at you real fast here over the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, but many, many thanks to uh, Jim and to Carl over there at CLW83.com for their support of Fred House Sports. Um, as we always do, we want to kick off our chat with about, uh, well, four minutes of, you know, some random football. And now, four minutes of football. Well, now looking at these two logos side by side, uh, if I didn't mo know better, I think that the Texans are in violation of a copyright infringement for stealing the Patriots' design. Instead, this past week, they simply stole the Patriots' backup quarterback. Uh, we've talked about it around here for weeks. Uh, what in the world were the Patriots uh, going to do with Ryan Mallett? Uh, um, and some of the speculation from some around here. Uh, actually dating back months ago was that he would find his way to the Texans. Well, Belichick, Belichick's team, uh, well, he doesn't carry three quarterbacks. Uh, and if for no other reason than just dollars, well, the Patriots are kind of high on Jimmy Garoppolo. So in exchange for a seventh round uh, draft pick, which could actually turn into a sixth round pick, uh, if Mallet plays 40% or more of the season's plays with the Texans, which is entirely possible, Mallet goes to Houston. Uh, it's believed that Ryan Fitzpatrick will open for the Texans uh, on Sunday, uh, but that could look very, very different, I would say, by about week four of the season. And if that happens, well, then I'm going to be looking for a new backup QB for my fantasy team. Um, at the same time, though, I got to say that I really don't feel that the Patriots got the best uh, value, in my opinion, for Mallet. Uh, I think that they could have gotten more for him in, say, a pre-draft deal. But, of course, had they done it at that time, then they wouldn't have had Garoppolo. So, I mean, you know. But uh, a seventh-round pick for a guy that potentially could be, I mean, really, could be a starter on a team like the Texans. I don't know. Well, you know, here's an interesting fact about Mr. Mallet. Since 2011, he's thrown exactly four passes. Well, look, look, yeah, but look what team he's been on. I know. All right? All right. Uh, hard to believe, but EA Sports uh, Madden Football video games uh, entering their 27th year. And, uh, well, some might think that it's a secret weapon or just maybe one of those hidden cheats in the new 2015 Madden that debuts a one foot two inch linebacker. Uh, thanks to what's being called a glitch in the program, the developers over at EA Sports, well, they really screwed up by placing Christian Kirksey on the wrong team. 
the Tennessee Titans, first of all. Uh, but at the same time, then, this becomes a Titan that's living in a land of giants. Uh, well, not only the New York Giants, uh, but everybody's a giant. Uh, with Kirk's, uh, Kirk, uh, Kirksey uh, being, as you can see here, just a bit vertically challenged. Uh, Kirksey, by the way, was the third round draft pick of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, so uh, they've even got the whole thing all messed up here. But uh, be aware that there are fantasy analysts out there right now claiming that Kirksey could be a sleeper uh, this year. That's assuming that he doesn't get crushed in the first week. Have you seen some of the videos that people I have been posting? I haven't. Oh my God. It is so funny. Like people are playing with this? Yes. And they're showing him on run, on the kickoffs going after guys, and then another guy fall on him. I saw. I did see it's one where the hilarious. it looked like the it looked like where the, he gets crushed. Yes, it's yes, awesome. yes. I may have to pick up Madden for this. Okay, um, as we're about to embark on a new season with more and more announcers and broadcasters, referees, and others announcing that uh, they refuse to use the name Redskins in public. Uh, a new study and poll was recently released reflecting that the vast majority of Americans, uh, well, they don't get the fuss. Langer Research polled uh, 1,019 Americans nationwide uh, recently with 71% responding uh, that they were in favor of the team remaining uh, and retaining their Redskins name. 68% indicating that they do not view the name as disrespectful. Uh, 54% saying that they think it's unlikely that the name will be changed. Uh, if the name does get changed uh, in light of these <coughs> kinds of results that we're hearing here, and this is not the first poll to give us this kind of information, I got to tell you, honestly, I, I seriously, seriously have questions about our democratic society creating non-existent issues. This is ridiculous. Well, opinion. this story is getting as, about as tired as, yeah, what yeah. team is Michael Sam playing for today? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, come on, just can we, you know, there's no story here. Uh, and, and, and more and more, the evidence is pointing that out. All right, before we get into our weekly Fred House Sports Picks of the Week, uh, we thought we'd start it off uh, on this opening night by taking a look at just the NFC South. And, oh, Mark, you did some analysis on this for us. And what do you got for us on this? There's been a lot of conversation, believe it or not, about this little division over there. Yeah, well, the, you know, this division last year was up for grabs. I mean, essentially because nobody really knew uh, what to expect. But I'll be honest with you, from the uh, two thir 2013 perspective, it's how I'm going to hit you with some numbers here that you can kind of relate to. You got the Saints, obviously, in the NFC South. They are a favorite to win it. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, they went 11-5. and five. I mean, now, what did they lose in their offseason? They lost Darren Scrolls to Philadelphia. They lost Lance Moore, uh, who was released after eight years. Um, Malcolm Jenkins signed with Philadelphia. He had been around uh, New Orleans uh, for five years. So they really didn't cast off anybody that was brand new. They kept Robert uh, Meacham. Uh, they have six really top caliber uh, wide receivers to work with uh, Drew Brees. The early word with these guys essentially is, you know, they've got a relatively light schedule. Uh, week two at the Browns, week four at Dallas. I mean, call that two W's right there. Uh, they are going to face some adversity. There's no two ways around it. They've got some cold games coming um, and they're outdoors. The Lions week seven and the Bears in cold soldier field in week 15. One thing to say about this team, you got the Breeze, Peyton, uh, synchronicity a la Brady Belichick on the AFC yeah. side. This team is really the team to beat in my view overall uh, in the NFC. Uh, bring it down a peg. Panthers last year. Carolina 12-4. and four. Go figure. They won the division. Nobody expected to see that. Well, I got news. You can't expect to see that again this year. Uh, what they did was during the offseason they cast off virtually 
their entire wide receiver squad. And now Cam Newton, who's hobbled and not really, we're too sure what he's going to do, has nobody really left to throw to. Um, the early projection for them is probably a best of nine and seven. Uh, Riverboat Ron uh, Rivera has a lot, a lot of work to do uh, to make these guys go. They have a late, <laughs> scratch that, they have the last bye week, number 12. That's really going to put a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. Um, they're going to see, obviously, the Seattle, uh, the champs from last year, Super Bowl um, in uh, uh, about mid-season. The, the real question, can they keep Cam Newton upright? That's what's going to really make it for them. Uh, drop one, down one more. The Falcons, last year, 4-12, and 12, uh, another absolute disaster. I mean, it was one of those that you, you didn't want to watch, but you couldn't look away. <laughs> they lost Tony Gonzalez. Uh, uh, their offensive tackle, uh, Pro Bowl possible uh, going forward. Uh, Sam Baker is out for the entire of 2014. Uh, on the upside, they have a healthy Julio Jones, and this team is 100% offense. There is no question about it. Uh, revitalized Matt uh, Ryan is what they hope. They have Julio Jones, a mainstay in Roddy White. Uh, Steven Jackson, Jaquez Rogers seem to work well in tandem. Uh, they could almost be what the 2012 Falcons were, which was a 13-3 and record. Mm -hmm. uh, but take back a few, because they have absolutely zero defense, and that's really what's going to hurt them. They have a bye week number nine. That's a plus. Coach Mike Smith, uh, Mike Smith, he's been out there now eight years, I believe, maybe seven years. Um, he's working on a one-year contract extension. It doesn't speak well if these guys don't go 6-0 and against their own division and prove they're somebody again. And the Buccaneers, well, exit uh, Greg Shano, enter Lovey Smith. They were 4-12 and as well, just like the Falcons. They were terrible last year. Uh, what did they lose? Well, Darrell Rebus, uh, he hopped off, took two years at $32 million. He's off to New England to establish his island there. Uh, what else did they lose? MRSA. Mercifully, we're not going to have that again. They lost a quarterback who was an absolute head case in Josh Freeman and a coach in Mike, uh, in Greg Shino, who was likewise a head case. What really did they get? Not a great, great deal. Best projection, probably like a 7 and 9, maybe 6 and 10. They've improved defensively. They're way too young to really know if there's anything going to happen. Josh McCown was a good pickup. Uh, the question is can they keep him upright? Will he do what he did last? Last year with Chicago, he almost replaced Jay Cutler, if you remember. There was cries in Chicago. Uh, and he's reunited with uh, Lovey Smith. So there's a possibility, but they've got a long stretch where they could go probably five or six games losing streak again this year. Any thoughts on any of this stuff? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I've actually, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I've heard it a lot, but believe it or not, I've actually read some analysts say, Watch Tampa Bay. They could actually win this division. I, I, well, you know, I'm a Lovey Smith fan. Yeah. And I thought he was, you know, he got the shaft when, you know, they fired him out of Chicago. Um, but I like the fact that, you know, with him in Tampa, and it just goes in with that lineage of defensive-minded coaches with Tampa Bay. So. And Tampa Bay did not have a bad defense even last season. No. Well, no, they I had a 17th totally ranked defense. Right. They had a 32 ranked offense. They right. were dead last in the league. And there is no reason to believe they're going to have any offense. And when you're talking about going up against the Saints and you're talking about going up against Atlanta, who's going to be revitalized and chase the Saints every inch, <laughs> the Buccaneers <laughs> forget about it. I think that's the question, though. Is Atlanta was what we saw last year an that anomaly? Was, was I, that an anomaly? Was it because Jones was out? Was it because uh, Matty Ice just had a bad season? Um, you know, is that an anomaly, or are we going to see some of that kind of stuff being repeated? I think really Atlanta kind of is the wild card in that division at this point right now. Well, yeah, there. Uh, Atlanta's always a threat, I think. Um, New Except Orleans, last year. New Orleans almost predominantly gets, you know, gets the crown going into it. You know, kind of, you know, they're yeah. going to be the team to win the South. Right. You know, um, Carolina, nobody really cares. You know, or not not that nobody cares, but nobody expects them to really, you know, they're, they're, they're going to middle their way through the division, you know, based upon how well Cam Newton does. Mm -hmm. You know, he had that breakout rookie year, and he's fallen flat on his face since. 
I'm well, you know, it's Campbell funny. You're right. Which is always the... You're right about that because uh, the Cam Newton scenario out there kind of reminds me of like a 92 Eagles where you had uh, Randall Cunningham and you had uh, uh, Reggie White. So you had a ferocious one player on offense and a ferocious one player on defense, but really you had very little else. Well, that's, it's that's almost, kind of what the Panthers almost, are this year. It, it's almost reminiscent of the Vic era in Atlanta where, you know, Everything was built around well, it was Michael offense. Vick. Yeah, it was you know, offense. Right. And, you know, <coughs> Michael Vick just wasn't cutting it in Atlanta, and they couldn't, you know, they wouldn't get rid of him. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, going into last season, there wasn't anybody that would have thought. I mean, had we turned the clock back and we're going back to this night in 2013, there wasn't a soul out there that would have thought that Atlanta, who what, started the season the year before, weren't they like 8-0? and oh? Yeah. I mean, they went unbeaten, I think, for like half the season. Um, Absolutely right. Like I say, they finished 13-3 and three in 2012. Yeah. I mean, Atlanta out and out dominated that division. Right. No one would have thought that they would have been a 4-12 and 12 team last year. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, all right, that was an anomaly. We'll throw that season away. We'll forget that happened. Atlanta's going to be back to their 2012 style. Now, that's the case. Now you might be able to rival... The new, uh, the new Orleans Saints. Right. So. Well, that's who you got to beat. Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Uh, historically, it has always been one of our most popular segments of the entire year. Um, and it's that time in the show when we all get to make our picks for a select handful of games uh, that we have uh, selected here during the course of the week. And we're going to start it off with a matchup down in the NFC South. Uh, and that's the Carolina Panthers at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a 425 game on Sunday. Uh, as was just pointed out, in fact, we're going to take a look at both games up at the top here. Or they're both NFC South games. As was just pointed out there by Uncle Mark, Carolina won the South last season with a 12-4 record, while the Bucks were in the basement 4-12. And as I pointed out, I've heard and read some analysts that are predicting that the Bucks will be a much improved team um, this season. Uh, their defense, as we've talked about, uh, wasn't half bad last season. Um, some, as I pointed out, actually have projected them to win the division. Specifically with this particular game, Panthers QB Cam Newton is currently a game day decision as he's hobbled from uh, a preseason uh, fractured rib situation. Um, interestingly, at this moment right now, Tampa Bay is a two-point favorite. Uh, who wants to start it? Jump in. How are we going with this one? Sidekick? Well, um, you know, you got, like we mentioned, you got new uh, coach Lovey Smith down there. Uh, again, a defensive-minded uh, coach who I think is going to do good things with Tampa. Mm -hmm. um, you've got, uh, but then on the other side, you've got Cam Newton, who this year will be, while dealing with the rib, will be dealing without uh, wide receiver Steve Amanejo-Smith and Brandon LaFell. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if he's healthy, if he can stay healthy enough, yeah. he doesn't really have anybody to throw to. So, you know... I don't know how it's going to bode for Carolina this season. I'm going with Tampa Bay on this. All right, Tampa Bay for sidekick. Uncle Mark? Well, I'll go with, uh, I'm going to base it on the ranked defense, uh, number two Panthers versus number 17 Bucks. Never mind the offense, because once again, the Buccaneers were uh, dead last, number 32 last year, and I don't believe they're going to probably have to reach up to touch bottom again this year. I'm going with the Panthers by four. I think it's going to be that close. Some could say it's a Carolina line. Tampa Bay's only getting two points at home. Right. I think what that's indicating is that Vegas isn't even quite sure which way this could go. It could go either way. Might even come down to uh, say something in overtime. Who knows? Uh, I'm going to take Tampa Bay, though, uh, to start this one out. We're going to stick with the NFC South. Let's go over and take a look at the New Orleans Saints at the Atlanta Falcons. That's a one o'clock game on Sunday. We were just talking about these two teams at length. Uh, Saints last season, second place, as Uncle Mark pointed out, in the division with an 11-5 record. Fal Falcons were uh, co-seller dwellers with the Bucks at 4-12. and 12. 
been a lot of speculation, um, even right here on this very set, that last season was an anomaly for the Falcons. And listen, get yourself ready for the big time comeback uh, to take place. Make this team uh, as dominant as they were in 2012. Now, you can't ever dismiss uh, the Saints and Drew Brees. Many are already crowning them the NFC representative to the Super Bowl. Uh, this week, uh, it very possibly is pointing uh, to that as the Saints are one of only three road teams that are favorites all across the entire NFL. Saints right now are favored by three. Uncle Mark, what do you got on this one? Yeah, well, there's no two ways around it. Here's what's going to happen. Devin Hester signed on with uh, the Falcons, and he's going to try to make uh, the most of it for their return specialist. Uh, they have tried to shore up on the defensive side of the ball, uh, especially in the draft. <laughs> Bottom line, Saints are going to win this by double digits. It's not going to matter. That doesn't mean the Falcons won't have a good year, but a 27th ranked defense is still going to be 27th ranked coming up against the Saints' fourth ranked offense period like it well you know I see here's the key matchups I see uh, you got Pro Bowl quarterbacks in Drew Brees and Matt Ryan uh, they essentially kind of wash each other out um, you've got uh, in the with tight ends you've got Tony Gonzalez going up retiring and you've got Jimmy Graham I'm giving that to the Saints mm -hmm. um, Steven Jackson while my favorite running one of my favorite running backs has been an utter disappointment yep. since going to the Falcons yep. um, you've got Jaquiz Rogers who's not you know he's kind of fumbling around uh, against the running back core of the Saints that's just phenomenal these guys run they catch they block you know um, I'm going with the Saints on this one. Who that? There you go. Make it a trifecta. I agree with Uncle Mark. Take the Saints and take it by double digits. Forget this three stuff. I think they're being they're just being kind on that one. How about the Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens? It's a one o'clock game on Sunday. Bengals were your AFC North Division winner uh, last year with an 11 and 5 record while the Ravens and Mr. 100 million dollar QB man Joe Flacco were a disappointing 8 and 8 and tied for second place with the Steelers in the north. Turn the clock ahead. The Bengals ginger giant Andy Dalton is now the new uh, well I guess he's close to 100 million dollars. Okay, he's the new 100 million dollar QB man and the uh, question is can he suffer the same Flacco type syndrome? Oh, and how about that Ravens defense? Have they come back yet to uh, what we saw in 2012? Well, not according to many. Uh, Baltimore is a mere one and a half point favorite. Uh, many, including myself, would say that's a Bengals line with the Bengals on the road. Uh, Uncle Mark, what do you got on that one? What do you think? Well, you know, it's a funny thing. I'm just going to go on strict gut with this one. Yep. Because you have two very good defensive teams coming back from last year, and they really didn't change a great deal uh, in the offseason. The Bengals were number three. The Ravens were number 12. They're in the division, and they hate one another. Uh, Harbaugh uh, in, in Baltimore has had his share of uh, off a field activity just like his brother out there on the left coast in the Niners so the Ravens are not necessarily going to be I think any powerhouse but I think they do rebound uh, back to form a bit I'm gonna give it to them they are at home um, despite the fact they're only favored by a point and a half I'll give it to them by three I think it's on the legs of uh, somebody like Tucker right to kick them three just to get them clear how about that interesting psychic well, you know, you've got I I've got serious questions about Baltimore this season, with the Ray Rice suspension. Um, you know, for the the games that it's he's two out. games, man, it's two games. That's it's, all. It's it's yeah. two games. You've got Bernard Pierce who's recovering from a concussion. He'll be all right. Um, They're going to use him. So you know, I don't know. And then you know, you've got the connection between you know the Ginger Giant and AJ Green. I'm going with Cincinnati on this one. Yep. Yep. Um, interestingly, uh, Uncle Mark, I kind of agree with you. I'm going on gut on this one, and I'm going to tell you right now, the only gut I got on it is the line. 
and I don't like the line. I nope. don't like the line for the Ravens. Nope. I'm going. I with think the there's something. I think there's something with Dalton, dude. To be honest with you, I think Dalton's going to have butterflies and come out not looking right. Well. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me indictment. either, but... <laughs> I don't think it's an indictment, and again, I'm going on God, but I just have a feeling Andy Dalton comes out and he misfires through too much of the game, and that's why it's going to come down to probably like a 17-14 final. Well, you know, I, you know I, I, I'm saying I'm going with gut. This game features two of my favorite Q, QBs in the entire world. I know. My fantasy team doesn't <laughs> like your feeling, Aaron Lamar. I need Dalton to play. Good. Dalton's, uh, Dalton's a good fantasy quarterback. I I took him to the championship the one season. All right, well, we're going to, you know, uh, uh, that one's... Or into the playoffs, rather, I'm sorry. Going to be an interesting one as well. I mean, these are all, these are all, I mean, for a first week, we've got good tight matchups here, at least from a spread standpoint. So I'm liking this. Because so many years in the past, we've called up these games and we're looking at, you know, six and seven point spreads. How about the Washington Redskins at the Houston Texans? That's a one o'clock game on Sunday. And uh, no different there. There's no six and seven point spread on this one. What do you see? Uh, now, some of you might out there might be saying, uh, what in the world? What are you doing? A previous three and 13 Redskins matchup versus a two and 14 Texans team. Uh, well, what's that going to generate? Nothing but crickets, huh? Um, but let's get it straight. There are a lot of eyes on the Redskins team uh, this season, uh, particularly to see if RG3 can or slash will finally have that bounce back uh, in, in, in the skip of his, you know, in the in his step uh, that was so hyped in what we saw his, his freshman year. But based on preseason, he didn't get high marks. Um, now, he does have a new target, Deshaun Jackson, and he's got himself a, a potent ground game with uh, Alfred Mars. Now, the Texans, on the other hand, and we talked a little bit about them, at the front end of the show. They're a work in progress. Let's get it straight. Um, which I frankly don't think we're going to actually be able to fully assess. And maybe not even by then. But not even before midseason. That'll be the earliest. We talked earlier about the acquisition of Ryan Mallett. But we already know that it'll be Fitzgerald that's probably going to be opening the season. Big, big money went over to J.J. Watt. What? Just this past week, I think. What? Yeah. What you say? Uh, but I got to tell you something. The last I checked, one guy a defense does not make. Houston is going to be, I think, a rather interesting project to watch this season, gentlemen. Uh, and we get a chance to start doing that on Sunday. The Texans right now are a, believe it or not, three-point favorite over the Redskins. Sidekick. Yep. Go for it. You know, I've been waiting for this since February 2nd. <laughs> Woohoo! It's the bomb diggity bomb pick of the week, baby. Yes, sir. Fire up the bomb. Woo! Uh, yeah. This better be a good pick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One more. Wow, man. All right. So we got the. What's interesting about this matchup is these two teams last year were last place teams. After winning the division the year before, yeah. um, How about that, I think uh, unfortunately it's gonna you know it spells danger for my fantasy team because I have RG three, but RG three I think is going to be getting a lot of JJ Watt and Clowney chasing him around right, all day. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. I'm a little worried, um, but hey, welcome to the NFL. Bill O'Brien, thanks for shafting on the, the Nittany Lions there and taking that NFL job we all knew you were kind of waiting for. So I'm going to, nonetheless, I'm going with Houston. Going with Houston on that one. Uncle Mark, what do you got? Well, the uh, Texans last year come back uh, to the field with the number uh, seven ranked uh, defense. There's no two ways around it. These guys are nasty. They're ferocious and they're slobber knockers, as uh, Sidekick would say. Yep. Uh, the Redskins, they didn't pale exactly. They ran right in the middle just about. They had an 18th ranked defense. They too can stop and stuff the run. Uh, the difference is, is going to fall on somebody like an Alfred Morris, who I like for um, the setup of probably seven or ten points by himself and that's about the difference i like washington in this by eight wow 
Washington by eight. Okay. Um, here's where I stand right now, and and I've been clear about You're this. Sitting, sir. Yes, I thank you. Uh, I, I've been clear about this that. Um, uh, I don't think the NFC East is a strong division. Obviously, it's not. Eagles may win it. They, if they're going to lose it, they're going to lose it to the Washington Redskins. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sold on the Redskins just yet. And the problem that I see is the QB position. Until I see RG3 back to the kind of form, at least... <laughs> 85%, 90% of the way back to form that we saw in his first year. I'm not sure about this team. And I got to tell you, I was gravely disappointed with what we saw through the preseason. Um, I'm not happy either with some of the things we're hearing coming out of that locker room, which was supposed to have kind of cleansed things with the coaching change. But I'm not sure what's going on in there as well. There's You're been rumors. You're referring to Houston, right? No, I'm referring or to Washington. Washington. Okay. Yeah, uh, there have been rumors that there's been a little bit of dissension going on there as well. So I'm going to reserve judgment for this week, and I'm going to go with Houston on this one. I got a little interesting note for you there with the Texans and Watt. J.J. Watt has more guaranteed money than all three major quarterback contracts that were signed in the offseason including Kaepernick, Cutler, and Dalton. He's getting almost $60 million guaranteed. And the other guys are nowhere near that. I think a lot of that has to do with the position you're talking about. That's yeah, what that's all about. number one. Sure. The defensive end must be number one they're, and a half. They're also, they're also more susceptible to injury. Then you would, shouldn't want to give it. You know, there. you're talking about Kaepernick being a mobile quarterback. Who else did you mention? Uh... Cutler and Dalton. Well, Cutler's not a mobile quarterback. Cutler, oh, Cutler. there's a question yeah. as to whether he's a quarterback at all. But well, He still signed a $100 million <laughs> contract in the offseason. Actually, a hundred teams, I believe. There is our, finally, our NFL report. Yes, we got through it incredibly. Thanks very much to our buddies down at CLW83.com. Get over there and check them out. And be checking out our Facebook page because I'll have the link up for Jim's Touch Mall program as soon as that gets released. And you're going to want to give that a listen because, well, yours truly is on it. Who's that? You know, yours truly. Oh, uh, sidekick? Yep. Oh, okay. All right, just checking. Let's get over to uh, NASCAR for this week. We are going to cover one other sport. Um, we move into the very, very last race of the regular season prior to the beginning of the chase. And our race report this week brought to you by our other good friends down in the uh, Maryland and Baltimore area down at Herb FM Sports Radio. And here's what you want to do. You want to make sure you get over to their website at HerbFM.com Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time for the live broadcast of the University of San Diego versus Western New Mexico. Be coming to you live over their internet streaming radio station, HerbaFM.com. <coughs> and don't forget that earlier in the afternoon, at 3 o'clock thereabouts, you can get a rebroadcast of our Frat House Sports Shows. So here's what I recommend. Just tune in to Herb FM Sports, HerbaFM.com. Yep. First thing, all day long, just leave your computer right there and you'll get it all. Yep. All right. Just pull up the website, just let it play in the house. Exactly. There you go. All right. We have uh, a little bit of uh, news uh, and events, a uh, few, few little bit of news and some events that took place this week uh, over in NASCAR. Uh, we've known now for over a year uh, that Nationwide Insurance would be ending their sponsorship of the uh, second tier racing series, currently known as the Nationwide Series, uh, at the conclusion of this season. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, many of us around here have has kind of speculated, well, geez, it's, that's a big nut to, to try to fill. I mean, get a sponsor for the entire series. What's that mean for the future of NASCAR racing and particularly the minor league? Well, those fears were alleviated yesterday when Brian France announced a partnership with Comcast Xfinity, who will sponsor the minor league uh, series for the next 10 years, providing some $20 million dollars a season in NASCAR for roughly $200 million over their 10-year period. 
Uh, any thoughts or comments on this, gentlemen? I find it somewhat ironic that uh, this coming Sunday, Junior is going to be unveiling a full-blown nationwide paint scheme on his vehicle. Um, ironically, as we were talking about this one, any thoughts? Anybody? I'm not happy about it. You're not happy about it? No. I because it's getting, it's getting, it's getting high marks. It's Xfinity, come on. I, now listen, I'm, 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 I'm not saying, I'm not saying good, bad, or different. I'm just saying it's gotten high marks from some of the columns I've read. All right. Uh, last week well, at this. Hopefully the cars don't run like their internet. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, we're not here to make endorsements, but last time I checked, they weren't paying any of our. Last week at uh, this time, we were all on uh, we were on Tony Stewart watch uh, for the race at Atlanta, and we didn't get a definitive word on that until I guess uh, late Thursday night, maybe uh, into early Friday. Stewart did return to driving uh, Sunday evening and uh, did it with a NASCAR exemption uh, that he would be eligible for the chase if he could win one of the final two races of the season. It was obviously uh, a tough couple of days for Stewart, who uh, we've talked about it numerous times now, re missed uh, three races prior to Atlanta following the death of uh, Kevin Ward Jr. at Canandaigua Motor Park uh, in a sprint car uh, driven by Stewart on August 9th. Um, Stewart obviously had very, very little to actually say about it. He made some uh, broad comments to the media uh, but it was evident in those comments that uh, uh, he, you know, it was, it's been something that uh, has left an impact on him as well. But nonetheless, it was good to get Tony Stewart back behind the wheel. Yep. And he, he came out he, at race. He, he really did. He started off like gangbusters. He really did. Until Kyle Busch started acting like Kyle Busch. Yeah. 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 Tool bag. Well, you know, hey, and you, you see what Kyle's finish was and how that went. Another... Yeah. Typical week for Kyle in the past, what, six, seven, eight weeks. Exactly. Sunday night, we were down at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and lo and behold, uh, well, we've only been mentioning it here for a number of weeks now. Uh, Casey Kane got the win that he needed to lock himself into the chase. Yep. And our top five drivers uh, at Atlanta, Casey Kane, obviously, number one, Matt Kenseth, got himself another top five. No wins, though. Uh, he's into the yes, he is. Denny Hamlin came in third. Jimmy Johnson for the second week in a row got uh, fourth. Carl Edwards came in fifth. And again, real quick, we'll just take a look. I mean, th this one's kind of irrelevant. There's the leaderboard. The one we really want to see, I guess, is the bubble drivers that we've got right there. Uh, and really, it's, you know, as, as just pointed out, Kansas, Kansas is locked in. As you can see, we've got, what, um, almost a 50-point spread there between he and Ryan Newman. You got Newman, you got Greg Biffle to round out the 16. Clint Boyer is just below the line. It looks like, what is that, about 13 points? No, 23 points. 23 points behind. Kyle Larson, they're uh, 24 points behind. So um, it does set up to be an interesting race for some of the guys down near the bottom of the list here as we go into Saturday night racing. We're sticking with Saturday. We're sticking with night racing and we're going to go Saturday night. Richmond International Raceway at 7.30 p.m. This race on ABC. So the last race of the season being covered by ABC Network. And that means we need your final fantasy suggestions for this well, it's not the final of the year, but no, for final, final for the, of the season. regular season. So what do you got? Uh, we're going under the lights. Final race of the, se the regular season, season right. at Richmond. Here we go. Joey Logano, $28. Dude is on a mission the mm -hmm. second half of this season. Woof. Brad Keselowski, $27. Short track wonder kid here. Penske. And the Penske, Penske guys have the been dominant. Penske at this. the top. Can't argue with it. Can't argue with it. I'm, I'm, I'm been dominant, not man. telling you to change it. You're, you're, We're going with You've uh, been right all Jeff, year long. Jeff Gordon, 2725. Retirement? Really? Put that rocker away. Absolutely. This guy's trying to get himself a championship. Absolutely. 
Um, and then we're going to go with Lynn Castle, 725. Okay. And we're going to show some love to somebody we haven't mentioned, I think, this season. But we're going to throw a lucky dog out for David Stremme, 575. That takes our roster to 9575. There you go, 9575. Okay, a few dollars left over. Let's take a look at our Frat House Sports Fantasy Leaderboard. You dropped down again uh, to I number two, yep. but we'll see. Did not How do too well. Even though I did pick, I did correctly put the winner of the race on my roster. The other guys didn't do so. Differential well. there is about 50 plus points. Uh, Brandon's over in third, and uh, well, your team, Blood Pack yeah, team, down in sixth. Dropped a little bit. He's only a point behind. And I don't know where heck. I think I'm like 30th in a 25 team lead. Uh, but it's <laughs> not my year. It's not my year in NASCAR, but what can I tell you? Me. Uh, oh, no! There you have it. Uh, there's our race report for uh, this week, brought to you by Herb FM Sports Radio. Uh, HerbFM.com, and make sure, as I point out, you get over and give that live uh, football game a listen. Uh, San Diego and uh, Western New Mexico, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, on Saturday night over at HerbFM.com. All right, well, let's get over to our Frat House Sports Facebook post of the week before we get out of here for our third anniversary evening. Um, and that was a video uh, that was posted up of Little Leaguer and Teeny Dragons pitcher Monet Davis throwing out the first pitch at a Los Angeles Dodgers game the other evening. And I got to tell you, it was a damn good pitch for a 13-year-old. Um, and regardless of what that says, yeah, 250, uh-uh. Last I checked, that post had uh, 400, close to 400 views and many, many, many shares to it. Um, and that's, well, the kind of stuff you can get over on our Fred House Sports Facebook page. And as I pointed out, that's going to be important for the next uh, week or so or a uh, week and a half, two weeks as we roll out all this new programming that we're going to be doing. Uh, don't forget our Frat House Sports Facebook page, fradhousesports.net, announced two years ago on this very evening and our first anniversary. Um, and then as I just pointed out, don't forget next week. No, nope, you're not going to catch us on Friday on YouTube. You can catch us live on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time over at Blog Talk Radio, blogtalkradio.com and uh, either look for our link over on our Facebook page or you look for Frat House Sports, type in search Frat House Sports and you're going to have the opportunity to call in if you wish and uh, participate in the program. This is fun stuff, guys. Fun stuff and uh, yep. congratulations to everyone here on three years. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing that we've been able to do this. And I thank Everybody here, thank everybody here for everything that you guys have put up with and done to make this happen. Uh, let's get to some football, which means you got to do one more thing for me. You got to keep us real, you got to keep us live, and you got to keep us going. We'll see you, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Well, here we are one more time. Fantasy football season with Frat House Sports. And that means one thing and one thing only. A certain member of the Frat House Sports on-air team badgering me week after week about how he beat me three times last season. That was then. This is now. Sidekick, look. I'm going to give you props. You beat me fair and square the three times. A couple of those games were close. Things could have went either way. All well and good. But that was then. This is now. And I'm going to give you props as well on one other front. You have a great team. You do. You, you had a better draft than I did. In fact, on paper... Your team is currently projected to beat my team by 10 or more points. Good for you. Good for you. But, uh, last time I checked, games weren't played on paper. 
So effectively, sidekick, this is your team. See this? It's called a paper tiger. Can you say paper tiger? I'll give you a chance. It's tough for you to communicate sometimes. Paper tiger. And on paper, this tiger looks lovely. I mean, look, the lovely orange, the black stripes. I, I like the fading effect because my printer was really not working with me. But regardless, adorable tiger. Ferocious. These are called scissors. And I bring these out for a very important reason. Because a paper tiger can be slayed just like that. Cut the head off the paper tiger. And that's what I'm going to try to do this week to you, sidekick. Let me put it in wrestling terms for you so you really understand it. In the past, you've been the Undertaker. 3-0, undefeated, taking on all comers, well in this case me, and beating me three times. The difference though is this. In the past you went over a pushover named Jim Williams. Now you're going up against an angry, raging, pissed off beast incarnate. My name is Jim Williams. I'm going to be the one in three and one. And more importantly, after this week, to start the season, I'm going to be the one in one and oh. Now, for those of you who've been watching this show regularly over the last many weeks, months, and years, thank you for watching. Hopefully, as you heard on the show, Frat House Mike said some very nice things about some very nice upcoming projects. We hope you stay tuned in. So, on behalf of all of them and the hardworking people behind the scenes who don't get the credit they deserve, good night and sidekick, good f***ing luck.